today I want to go through how we're going to do needle felting and specifically needle felted baubles for Christmas, um, which I think make a very unique gift and aren't extremely costly with your outlay. Um, so if you want details on where I got my baubles and um, even the needles that I'm going to be using and some of the, the wool, the yarn that I'm going to be using, have a look at the mini smallholder.com because I've got everything in the article and I'll link to it in the description for this. But for a basic how to, I just want to go through how I got these um, and hopefully I can do a step by step and build on it for you. Um, and it's down to you what wool you use and, and what you'll get as a creation from that. But as I say, I, I like the ones I've created um, as just a little go towards a sort of a Christmas hamper. So whether you call them baubles or whether you call them pom-poms, this is the basic premise is the same. So if you are going to be needle felting, under normal circumstances, to pr protect your lap, you'd need almost like an upholster's, upholstery block of foam that will be firm enough to sort of take the needle piercing it. But instead, we're going to be piercing directly onto the bauble. Okay. Now, one of the things that we've banned from using is scissors. So you can see this has got a natural order to it so it has been carded um, and naturally dyed so these are from rare breed sheep now from our point of view this is all part and parcel of us determining what we're going to have in our small holding what works best so in order to pull it apart no scissors all you do very gently is just do that okay um, and you can see another way of doing this would be to pull it apart sideways okay so you can buy wool that's less organized if you like than this but for this one this works very well now you see i've sort of got these swirling patterns as if it well i was thinking i think i thought i was going for like a design like it was some sort of planet but you see it's got that natural coloration in the dye now you can buy solid colors and that might be fun as well for a sort of starter so it's as simple as this with the needle felting what i do i lay it so that it's quite taut but you can see this particular needle, um, it's not in a holder, but it's relatively easy for me to use. Now, I can feel the threads going into the polystyrene. So what would normally be a sound that we don't want if we were needle felting an animal or a sculpture of any sort, because we don't want to hear it going into the polystyrene, but that sound is what we want to hear. Okay, so I'm going to do occasional very deep ones, and that it's going to be enough to secure it to the top. You can see, <laughs> that could be an angel's head with some very funky hair. Um, and then I'll just keep working my way around it. So some people buy like little leather finger guards. Now I haven't been needle felting for years, but I can already see what my pace is. So. Do not try to go above and beyond your pace would be my advice. Okay, so that's the best advice I could give you. So I know how fast I can go without stabbing myself. So initial outlay, if you want a set of needles, we've got a couple on the site or you can buy them anywhere, like, you know, craft shops, um, even my local wool shop sells them. We're talking four pounds for a needle like this. When you want them to be multi-needled, and this is a good example of a project that would suit a multi, excuse me, a multi-needle. Um, so instead of having one needle, I'd have a block, and then maybe I'd have four or eight of these inside it, um, and then I could just press, 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 and each one would be worth so much more. Um, and that, that could be a way of doing it as well. Now, with the baubles, I've experimented and done some just with the yarn. Obviously, you've got to stay consistent with your size, so you just use the same amount of yarn each time. But because they come in kind of sort of wraps of wool, you'll find yourself using an awful lot more if you do it that way than if you just go outside of a polystyrene ball. So these polystyrene balls may be for 10, I'm talking three pounds. So 30 pence a ball ball. 
I think three is a nice size gift. And ironically, they make lovely stocking fillers. Um, total amount of time this is going to take you. Now, realistically, it depends on how felted you want it to be. So I'll move on from this one and I'll show you another one that I've got on the go. So maybe this one took me something like an hour to produce. Um, and then if I want to just finish off, all I'll do is just keep building what I've already got. Okay, now this is the interesting bit. So it's down to you how blended you want it to be. So you'll see, because this is serrated and it gets fatter or wider towards the top, the deeper I push down, the more threads I'm taking with me and the more compact my wool becomes. So if I want a nice gentle blend between the two, I can kind of do it like this and just give it lots of nice neat ones. If I want it to be less defined, I'll start doing that. Okay, so I'll go sideways into it and you can see the colour is shooting through it. Okay, so you come at it from all different angles to get that mixture. But because for this design I want it to be nice and neat, I can do that. Now needle felting is, well, it's quite good fun. It's quite instant as far as gratification goes. But one thing you do have to be aware of is once you have compacted and felted it, it's very difficult to undo what you've done. Because all these tiny little fibres, because we're not using any scissors, they're all quite jaggedy and rearranged. So they will all sit together quite nicely and sort of form quite a strong bond quite quickly. So it's all down to you how you want to build it and how much time you want to then spend. I like this particular yarn because it's got those colours built into it. So I like this idea, it looks almost like sort of a, a planet with its sort of striations, but that's just me personally. Now, if you wanted to, you could keep it all one colour and then just spend the rest of your evening doing that. So realistically, you could spend as long as you want doing it. The one thing I would recommend you be wary of is because it's polystyrene, all the side swiping could lift little bits of the white off and then I'm sure I left one with some on, you get tiny little flecks of white come up through and they're kind of difficult to get rid of without unmatting it. So you then have to kind of hide them. So it can be a little bit annoying. Um, but what I wanted to show you was how we get that nice sort of individual swirl. Okay, so if I choose a different colour, and what I'm going to do, and again, there's no predicting how this is going to look, <laughs> especially on camera um, it tends to just sort of come out any old way but what I want to do is I want to follow so you can see what I've done here is what I started doing here so I started following it in a line and then I make a circle then what I do is I fill the circles sort of by making semicircles of the wool so you can see I've done that here that is a semicircle of wool that I've just pushed close together by basically doing that and then tucking up the thinner bits okay flattening it on and then needle felting it so that's how we get that effect but that's the same as what I've done here so I want this to kind of follow that as much as possible I might use slightly less wool so I want a nice swirl to offer a little bit of interest So it might look completely different to yours, and that's kind of the beauty. So you have to be really careful with your fingers at this point. So I want to keep it distinct, but at the same time, I've got to give it some nice deep prods. Okay. So you can see, hopefully, that it is relatively easy. Now, once I've done that, of course, I can give it lots of little ones to help it actually bond with all the other material but you can see it's not really going to move under normal use and then I'll just keep re 
forming it as I go and then very gently make sure now the tighter you do this the harder it is for those loose fibers to actually bond with one another so there's a bit of a experimentation process but because the baubles kind of look relaxed and loose anyway there's only so much you need to worry about um, and they're all meant to be unique anyway aren't they so you can't really complain if yours looks unique in a way that you hadn't predicted or necessarily banked on okay now it's not zero waste because you've used the polystyrene and I know normally everyone accepts that I use zero waste however the yarn is locally purchased and you're helping small farmers and as I say you can do it without the polystyrene balls it just starts to get quite costly uh, as you start to use a lot of the wool I'll show you in another video how to make balls of wool um, because actually they can be very useful foundations and I think we could do a chain pom-pom very easily from that so maybe that would be nice to look at. Now when it comes to finishing this off I'm just going to sort of actively encourage it into the existing colours so you can see it just kind of fades quite easily but in a minute I'll show you a slightly easier way of ensuring that happens and you can spend hours doing this don't get me wrong you really can but this is my simple way of doing it if you start going sideways you start to sort of mix up where all the threads are so this is the actual felting stage of it it's where the threads stop being in the order they were once in and if you like they're kind of matted so these are going to my office as secret santa gifts so i'm hoping no one watches this before because <laughs> i'm putting this out at the start of december <laughs> so maybe this was a school school girl mistake but so I wanted it nice and blended there and nice and blended there and again it just gives it something just a little bit different but I'm hoping you can see that perhaps those three would form a group and these three would and they actually start to look almost as if they're a bit designer and a bit chic so hopefully pop over to the site for a few more instructions as to where to get the materials but I'm hoping people can see this isn't actually a scary hobby um, and the initial startup costs are so small that you can give it a go and if you don't like it pass it on to a friend to see if they prefer it um, but once again thanks ever so much for watching and um, if you want to subscribe to the channel or to the website you know that would be fantastic as well but thanks ever so much and um, yeah if you do subscribe please share with us uh, your own creations thank you bye